Periscope, it's Zakia. All right, let me see. Is everything there? That's there. That's there. That's there. E B V F D. All right, let me count to 20. Let me see something. One, two. Hey, Basil, Nichelle, how are you? You guys can't see me yet. Haters, Edible Sins, gift shop suppliers. Guys, as you are coming in, can you type a number one in to let me know if the signal comes across clear? Hey there, Edible Sims. How are you? Hey, Miss Pia. Okay, so you guys can see. I don't have to reset. I do have my call-in option available. Hey, Nichelle. How are you? All of you, thank you very much for typing in those ones. That lets me know we are good to go. I'm knocking over boxes. So, this is not just a prop that I have. I am crooked. Hold on. <laughs> That's the one thing. I can't test out the way the picture is going to come across before we go live. So unfortunately, I don't know that we're crooked until we're crooked, if that makes sense. So I spent the day, you know, typically Saturdays is soap shipping Saturday. But today I was actually at a soap makers meetup. And if you guys don't know what that is, that's where a group of soap makers get together and we kind of talk soap. And then we also learn a topic or two. And in today's case, four different topics. So first of all, my name is Akia. I make my own handmade natural soap. All of the links to anything that you can get from me are in my Periscope bio. So if you click on my bio, it will take you to my online store for soap, my blog, where I talk about my soap making journey and all of that other stuff where I have online classes, how to buy my books, how to get on my mailing list, and how to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All of that is in my links in my bio. There's one link that'll tell you exactly where to go, and it's not a bad place. So there are a couple of things that happen at a soap makers meetup, or any meetup that's surrounded by a particular topic. And so today's meetup, um, we had two speakers who both talked about two different topics. One I am very excited about because um, I wanted to start introducing facial serums. So we actually had a really in-depth lesson on what it takes to make a serum, how a serum is different from a lotion or a body butter. Um, and I got everything that I need to do that in this one brown bag, which is very interesting. Um, then there's also um, preservatives. So you guys know I always say I kind of stare away from making sugar scrubs and things like that. I have sugar scrubs, but I don't typically make them very often because there is the chance that water is going to get in here. Hey, Jamil the Great. Hey, Jewelry Pop. So with that chance of water getting into the product, you have to use a preservative. And um, so we had a lesson on preservative. I did use a preservative when I made this, but I'm more interested in natural preservatives. Hey, hey, how are you? Um, so I, I did learn of the natural preservatives that are out there because as you all know, the world is getting away from parabens. And most of the preservatives that are on the market today are filled with parabens. So I got the information I needed on that. Then we went into the science of soap making. We had um, the chemistry. Well, he's a very well-known chemist in the soap making realm. And he was talking to us about super fatting. And then he was also talking to us about how we can test the purity of the sodium hydroxide that we use to make soap. I'm doing, but got the, oh, you got a cold. <gasps> I was going to say, keep your germs. Do you take off of work when you got a cold? Or do you go in there and you sneeze on everybody like, Achoo, I'm sorry, I don't have any time available. Achoo, I'm sorry, I don't have any time available. Um, but hopefully you feel better soon. Yes, all for it. Cool. Sand Commander, welcome to the broadcast. So, you have your lessons. But then there's also goodie bags where vendors will come from all over the place and they will supply the meetup with samples. 
So this backpack that I have right here, I have not seen it. We're going, hey, Miss Francis, um, we're going to see it together for the very first time. For the first time in forever. We're going to see what is in this bag. Um, so they always give you a bag when you first sign in that you're there. Everybody gets the same bag. Everybody gets the same things that are in there. Then there is something known as a D stash. And a D stash is, I'm a soap maker. I think I'm going to make all of these incredible, fantastical, amazing things, but I never get around to it. So it is a way for you to recoup your costs and sell the things that you have not been able to use at a very steep discount. And when I say a steep discount, this jar or this bag here would typically cost you, if you would go into a store, about $30. You can't see on here, but I paid a dollar for this bag. And what this will be used for is lotion bars. You can hold lotion bars inside of here. So by going to these stashes, you find out what's new and upcoming in the industry. You get to try samples from the suppliers in the industry. You can buy the actual supplies. We had a shrink wrap representative there from a company. We had um, another company from Nature With Love was there where you could actually test their scents. One of the hardest parts about getting fragrances and essential oils, Zebra, thank you for the retweet, is that you don't know what they smell like. You can only go by a description. So when those vendors come to the events and you're able to kind of feel them out and see what it is that they have to offer, then you can say, okay, yes, I know. No, this one was in New Jersey. I go to three soap makers gatherings regionally. I go to the Jersey one, the Pittsburgh one, and the New York one. And then I also go to the national soap makers gathering. Um, I never pretend to know everything there is about soap making. There were people that have been in soap making there for about 25 years, and they were feverishly taking notes. And that's something that I love about handmade soap in particular, or the bath and body industry, I should say. There's always something new to learn. And this is my way of constantly sharpening the skill or sharpening iron, sharpening iron. So we're going to start with what's in the goodie bag. So we got a nice backpack. Paige will probably fill this with toys at some point. And then we'll go down the line for what's in your bag, what's in your wallet, all that good stuff. All right. So of course, five points. I don't know what the points are going to be for, but you can kind of already see it. Five points to anybody who knows what I always say. The number one or the number two tool for So if I, if you're looking for something to buy me on Christmas, what is that thing? Spatula. Daughter, you got the five points. Spatulas. It is Miss Francis. You are coming up in the rear with the spatulas. Miss John, so are you. That means you guys are completely indoctrinated into Soap Nation. All right. So the first two, number one, I don't know if you guys can tell how big or the difference between these two spatulas. Yay. Um, this one is a lot longer. This comes from a company called Soap Equipment. Now, Soap Equipment, um, they sell large scale. So if you're about to up your production, love the long one. Yeah, you can actually stir a much deeper pot. I make money moves. Welcome to the broadcast. All of you with the blue and the yellow hearts, thank you for tap, tap, tapping. You're cool. Um, so this allows you to get deeper into the pot and stir. And then this is your standard size spatula. If you have a soap maker in your life, get them spatulas. These vendors are on to something. They know what we're like. Then there's some paperwork. Innovation, ingenuity, 75 years. There's a chemical company that has some literature. Hemp foods. Ooh, let's see. What do they have? <gasps> this is telling us about what's happening in Pittsburgh. So the Pittsburgh Soap Makers Gathering will be happening on June the 22nd and June the 23rd. And it's a make it day. So it will be a lotion magic. So you're learning how to make lotion. Then you'll be learning how to do shampoo bars. We were on the broadcast talking about that. 
cream rinses and two lotions. Um, pH preservatives, cream rinse, lotions includes hands-on workshop with notebook. Then there's the actual conference day as well. So they're telling you about what else is coming in the industry, right? Ooh, this is pretty. You guys can't see it. I love this package. If I can find out how to get this package, this is what I would love to have the sample bars. How do we find these in our areas? I would say the best place to go is to look at the handcrafted soap and cosmetic guild because they're going to tell you who is in your area and what's around you. Um, so this one here, this is the name of the, um, the organization that I'm a part of. HSCG, Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. Um, but they have this little, but this is what I wanted to show you. If I can get these little envelopes here, this is the perfect size for a four pack sample soap set. But that's not what's in here, but I'll show you anyway. So it looks like it's some French black clay. Got a nice little ribbon on it. Get that ribbon on it. How do you open it? Oh. I'll show you. Has a nice little scoopy scooper. Get your, This is great for a sugar scrub, by the way. And then there are some clays. There's a French black clay, which is this one right here. Then there is also a glacial clay, which is a bentonite. So this is a terra black clay. I love that mini scooper. And this is a glacial clay. You for sight was on here asking me the other day about making facial masks. Once I get into the store, all bets are off, guys. I'm going to make every kind of bath and body product there is within reason, whatever that may be as a soap maker. There's never a reason except, oh, I can, so I will. So they give you this, and we're still on the freebies, guys. This is stuff that we walked into. Inside of this little pouch, you know that there's a movement right now across the world actually to get rid of the use of plastic spoons so this is a stainless steel spoon and then they said okay but how are you going to clean it and reuse it you got this little bottle cleaner I, the only reason i'm calling it a bottle cleaner is because i remember when Paige and nyla were little i would spend a lot of nights trying to get those nipples clean with these little things so they're doing their part for the environment with the stainless steel Straw has nothing to do with soap making, just making a point. All right, what else do we got there? And there's more. And there's more. Um, elixir, this is a tea bag, ginger root, orange peel, mint, eucalyptus, ginger, and orange flavor all in one. So, after a long night of soaping, maybe you want to relax with a cup of tea. Oh, I can use my little fancy um tea kettle pot thingamajigger. All right, of course. So I've been trying to figure out how am I going to package those one pound bags of soap. Perfect example right here. This is about a pound of soap. I can put it right in a baggie like this and send it out. So this is, save 25% off your next purchase from where? This soap smells good. I can smell it through the bag. That's always a good sign. So they gave us some soap samples. It's like taking sand to the beach. You're taking soap to a soap maker's gathering. I didn't know. But gives you a chance to try some other ones out. Here's some color combinations that you could consider. There's also hemp seed oil, which also has CBD isolate in there. So we've been talking a lot about CBD oil and hemp seed oil. That was a topic of conversation. I did get information on a payment processor. Now I just need to find an insurance carrier and we're in business. Um, but this is a sample of their hemp plus oil because it has that CBD isolate in there. So that was a freebie. Then we got coconut oil from Craft Chemical. I like this little jar. This would be great um, as I'm trying to figure out the items that are going to be in the soap making kits in the stores this would be like really cute as a selling factor but i think it would be kind of difficult let me see what the opening on this is i do like it it's a glass jar that ups the value when we open it yeah that would be kind of hard you would have to melt that oil 
you would definitely have to melt that oil to get it out. And I have a feeling that you would leave some in the jar if you don't have the tiny spatula to scrape it out. But I do like this jar. This might work for bath teas. It could work for milk baths. Um, I don't know what else I would use this for. But I do like this container. Glass always says quality to people for some reason. Then we got a, wow, a 14-ounce whipped soap body scrub. And it's called Volcanic Ash. Roslyn, you want to join? Come on in, girl. Thank you for joining. Let me let me let me pull you in. Good evening, lady. How are you? Oh, I hear your music. Oh, you might not have meant to press it. Let me cut you off. <laughs> He's probably in the gym working out. Like, darn it, I didn't mean it. Roslyn was added. Roslyn was removed. Roslyn, if you did want to come in. You got to turn your music down so we can hear you. Or if you're like me watching broadcast, good evening. How are you? If you're like me watching broadcast and accidentally pressing buttons, I get it. So I want to see this one because it's a whipped soap, but it's also a body scrub, which tells me they put something else in here. I love this package. Could you use the coconut oil for body? Absolutely. Coconut. Hey, Drea, coconut oil goes in everything. Um, it's like the all-purpose oil for us handcrafted soap, po soap folks. Oh, I need a knife or my brown water. Miss Francis, thank you for tap, tap, tapping. I see your heart going pow, 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 on the screen. I love this package. They even have their branding on the lid. Ooh. I don't know if I... It's, um... Whipped creamy Castile soap blended with fine volcanic ash to cleanse and exfoliate the body and or face. Apply the desired amount to wet hands and massage over desired areas. Soap blended with fine volcanic ash helps buff away dead skin and dirt, leaving skin feeling clean, smooth, and refreshed with no oily afterfeel or slippery bathtub. Ingredients. Shea butter. Olive oil, coconut oil, steric acid, volcanic ash, fragrance, and mineral pigments, organic and fair trade. This looks enticing. This looks very enticing to use for like a ladies spa night. And it's a mixture of white tea and ginger. And the matcha tea is actually fair. And they also have fair trade shea butter in here so i'm going to try this one out and if i love it i love this consistency i'll tell you that much so i gotta try it out so we got that what else was in our freebie we're still in our freebie bag this was just for showing up let me see oh that's the one i like that song right there nyla yeah, I know. that's the one i like wow Okay, I'm not opening this. This has sulfur sandalwood blends, bitter almond, and peppermint oils. They're like little teeny tiny. Normally, they're one ounce um, jars, which are great for trying out in a one ounce um, test batch to see if the scent lasts forever or if there's any 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 trickery happening. Then you guys have seen me making the bath bombs. And I use, there's a plunger that I'll put the bath bomb onto. Well, sometimes because that plunger is um, metal and I put the bath bomb onto there, what happens is it can crack the bath bomb. This is actually silicone. Is that Flavor Apprentice? This is perfumery. This comes from the perfumery that makes this. This was just another soap maker that was there and they were giving it away. It was in a free jar. So I just grabbed it. So it's another one to have on hand. Then there are some cards for the companies that were in here. Um, the Hemp Foods Place. There's a coupon. Look at that. Buy two, get a dollar fifty. Oh, mm. I don't know. Dollar fifty. But you know, a saving is a saving. 
Then they gave us a hemp bar, which is full of fruit and nut, cherry walnut flavor. And then there is a book, Better Bee. It's their catalog for all honey products, beeswax. <gasps> I opened right to the page. I didn't even tell you guys about the soap making portion of the training. Today we learned how to master batch our live solution to save time, how to master batch our oils, how to super fat or do a live discount the right way, um, and the effects that it has on the soap. And then finally, how to test the purity of our sodium hydroxide. And so what I need in order to do that, I open right to the middle of the page where I'll be able to mix up my live solutions in these doohickeys. Hey, Jade, how are you? Right in these little doohickeys. So there's a magazine. This is what they gave us for showing up today. That was the first of it. Then I went over to the... So if you need a game plan for going to a gathering, the first thing you do is sign up or sign in because you're going to get whatever it is that they have to and get there early just in case you don't have incredible organizers that have enough for everybody. You are insured to get yours because you have gotten there early. That was not a problem today. They had an abundance of goodie bags, but I'm just saying. Showing up early, and early is not at the start of the event, maybe about 15 minutes, and then you can also help out. So maybe they need help setting up the table, setting up the food, filling the goodie bags. You can volunteer to do those things. After you have done that, after you have claimed the seat that you're going to sit in, preferably closer to the front, so that if there's something on the screen, um, if there's something on the screen, you can actually see it. And then you can also make, I'm having a broadcast, you can't do that. What do you need? What's that? I'm about, oh, this is actually something I got for you, for your bath bombs. So you can stick around. What? What is that? And then you head over to the. Is this for me? This is for you. Then you head over to, well, it's not for you, but you can use it when we're making bath bombs. Then you head over to the D stash table. The D stash table is where you go and you get the items that you're going to save on. Nyla, are those scissors over there? No. I know where they are. Where are they? Oh, right here. Good girl. Thank you. No, they're right there. These are scissors too. They'll work. We got two pairs of scissors underneath the table. All right. So let's open this. When I saw this, it had P-A-I-G-E written all over it. <laughs> Darn it, I can't even spell anymore. She knows how to spell her name. But this will give me a bath bomb. You just fill up both sides, you close it, wipe it around. This is like a giant size meatball roller. She is going to have a field day with this thing here. One dollar. One dollar. You guys hear me? I'm going to say it again for impact. One dollar dollar okay then there are these little molds now a lot of people say why would you get so many tiny ones pretty cool yes well you get so many tiny ones this is a mat one dollar yes great for snow no that's what it was probably originally meant for but these i'm going to bring them up when you're doing bath bombs in order to get the color to shoot out, now remember, I'm going into a store and one of the things that I'm going to be offering are gender reveal bath bombs. What is that? So this here Mommy, will allow me, hold on Paige, this will allow me to have the various colors inside, and they're small. These are small, so you can see how small they are, but just that little pop-up color in your page. Get down. You're about to do something you're not supposed to be. Get down. So this will allow you to get those teeny tiny embeds that will give you the pop of color. And I could do three colors in one bath bomb, which would have it sh um, shooting out. So the outside could be white. Then I could have a pink one. I could have a green one. I could have a yellow one all in one bath bomb. So once it hits the water, this one dollar. And I could make 
endless embeds in one shot because there's so many on here. And then you just do them. Hey, true woman of God. Then you just do them and you have them for when you're ready to use them in the bath bombs. So I would do one color first. Then I would do another color, a rainbow effect in the bath bomb. So when it goes in, you get several colors at one time. So I got that one dollar. I've already showed you these here. You can actually see the price was written on it. One dollar. This here will be for my lotion bars. I can put a lotion bar in here. Bomb.com, right? Literally, it's for the bath bomb. This will allow me to put my lotion bars in there. They'll be protected from the heat and they're great travel size. You can carry them in your purse. So if you're getting a little ashy around the knuckles or in that interest in space between the thumb and the index finger pull out your little lotion bar right there Some people, somebody's going to say oh you have some gum no but i've got lotion from natural stood by the boom Mommy, you actually got from your old store. well not from my store from the meetup store here remember we were working on lip balms i really don't like the tubes but i do like these they remind me of the vaseline lip balm and it pushes up. Mommy. This whole thing has over 70 in here. And I paid $5. $5. All right. We're getting to the bottom of this one. Paige, what was that? I saw the lights flicker. Really nice. I have been trying to figure out a more um, eco-friendly soap solution for my packaging i was thinking the metal case for lip balm also yes you could do it for a lip balm as well and so these are soap boxes this is a standard soap box and i wanted to try these to see number one will my soap even fit in here because i don't think it will so i'm going to grab yeah i can see the larger bar no way jose oh no way jose is not going to do it but this one, ooh, pretty, no, nice. this will work for the tall and skinny, ooh, tall and skinny, I don't know, I gotta, I gotta put a little less soap on the top, but on the front, it's very pretty, then you have your label on the top and your label on the bottom, however, it's a little too tall, so I would have to know the highest you can pour your soap is wherever this is. And the cool thing is, especially in the store, especially, especially in the store, we won't have the time to do the shrink wrapping. So this is definitely an option. If I pour my soap a little show up, a little show up. So we got those. Oh, they all have the little circle on them. So it's like a little peephole for you to be able to see. You can also smell the soap in there as well. So I won't say. I'm trying to find something that'll fit. None of them. <laughs> None of them will fit. Dang it, Gina. Okay. So stop pouring so hot. Wait a minute. Ah. By George, I think we've got one. I'm trying to think what that was done in. Yeah, yes, honey. We have got one. We got 17 folks. Who's getting Are you guys freezing? I'm getting like a flicker of somebody trying to. So here it is in the box like that. And then you can put your ingredients on the back. The name, the name of the soap up here. And you are still, are you still freezing, Drea? I should probably pause and wait and see. Pause and wait and see. Pause and wait and see. Hey, Unique Kai, how are you? Not now. Not anymore. Thank you, guys. Okay. So, this could be an option. Because it could sit this way or this way. And you don't have to worry about people touching on the product. And you can actually smell right through here can smell through there so there's that one let me see oh more lip balms i need these for the easter baskets that we're doing 
This right here, somebody guess how much this was. There's 50 lip balm containers in here. 50. 50. Five zero. And I don't know if you guys know, but you just kind of unscrew them. One dollar, Drea. One dollar. If you do a little bit of research, these typically cost about 15 to 19 dollars, depending on where you get them. So for one dollar, I have everything that I need for what's going in the Easter basket bags. Very, very cool. All right. Was there anything else that was a part of the, I don't think, no, all of these, that was the beach stash station. That was the, no, no, sorry. And there's more. And there's more. Um, let's see. No, that's not it. These are, oh, I got a rosemary essential oil, which was brand new for $15. Rosemary, I need to crash a meetup. Rosemary essential oil is typically between $36 and $45. So that was a great buy. Um, now, tip, here is my rule. If I am ever at a meetup and somebody is selling a fragrance oil or an additive, a liquid, Something that could go bad, I'll only buy it if it's the manufacturer that has it. And it was the manufacturer that was there. And the reason I have that rule in particular is you never know how long somebody has had a particular ingredient at their house. So I never want to get that and then use that in a product because I don't know what the shelf life truly is. Meetup is not in South Florida. It has to be one in Florida. Look up... Um, Handmade in Florida. She's a very popular soap maker in Florida. I'm sure she has to know something about a meetup somewhere. But everybody can't be incredible like Philadelphia and surrounding counties, I'm just saying. Um, but yes, so that's the only caveat that I have. I know a lot of people, if they're hobbyists, they're not really, really selling their products. They don't mind testing out a whole bunch of fragrances and butters and oils but because hey hey goddamn can can how are you um but because i actually sell the products that i make i need to know that this is the lifetime of that particular oil that i'm using so i got that now there's also something called a soap swap and if you guys were in the car with me last year when i was driving home from pittsburgh i was showing you some of the items that i got from that one same thing with this one. Soap swap goodies. And what that is, is it gives you a chance to see what other soap makers are making, how they do their products, boxing soap. No, we're not boxing soap. I actually came from a soap makers meetup today. I probably should kind of do a reset before we go on to the last two items. So I went to a soap makers gathering today in New Jersey. And while I was there, there were some giveaways for showing up. There was a soap maker D stash where you could buy very inexpensive items that you could use for making your own products. Now we're at the point where I'm showing you the soap swap items. And a soap swap item is I'm a soap maker, you're a soap maker. Let's swap and see how we like each other's products, our packaging, or anything. A meeting of the soap maker minds. It was definitely a mastermind. I got a chance to meet up with four people that have opened stores, one person who has actually closed her store, and some of her lessons learned and what they would have done differently, what they've done well. Um, we're actually going to meet over lunch on Thursday of this week. So you're in a space where it's not about competition. It's about how how have you grown, how can I help you to grow, and all of that other stuff. So that was a really interesting part of it. So let's get on to what the other soap makers have. So this one is called Butter Beer Lager Soap. It's made with coconut oil, olive oil, palm oil, castor oil, lager, sodium hydroxide, and fragrance oil. So the way they package their soap, they have it in like a little sandwich baggie, which I think is very cute. It, it still has the homemade feel. They put a little bit of crinkle paper in there. You can see the soap through the top. And then they also have their business card on the back. 
So if you're brand new to soap making and you're like, I don't really want to do shrink wrap, but I can get my hands on some plastic bags. You have business cards. This is a great way to get started with packaging your soap. Um, and then people can actually smell through it. I actually don't really want to pull the time, but I'm going to do that with the little string here. And honestly, guys, I love this packaging because I didn't have to break a nail trying to get it open like with my soap, for sure. It smells really good. Let me take this off. This is what is known as a cigar band. And so you pull this off and then you can see the soap and they have the little crinkle cuts going across the top, which I think is really nice. Um, and the brown color to accentuate the fact that it's a beer soap, a lager soap. So nice job. Nice job. I can't wait to leather up with it. All right. So that's that one. Then someone, a silky smooth body wash. It's called Euphoric Musk. Now, these people most definitely have gotten a, it's soothing, nourishing, and moisturizing. 13 ounces, vitamin E and aloe. You can see their ingredients are listed on the back. And what was I just saying about no parabens? No sulfates, no parabens, no, I can never say that word, and no synthetic colors. So they're saying all of those key words that most people are looking for on handmade products. And this is a body wash. It's a silky smooth body wash. It's called Euphoric Musk by Bodhi. And I think that's the same company of this. Oh, yeah. It has a little tree and everything on there. Very cool. So I will be trying out the body wash tonight. But I do like this container. So let's see if I can find that container. If it has gold tops. Gold tops. All right. Oh, no, that was something else. Here is a candle, highly moisturizing. No. Ooh, smells nice, too. It's Hypnotic Botanicals. It's a sunflower candle. So I could see this being in someone's, like, um, office space. And then you have the scent coming off from here. I don't know if it's uh, what kind of candle. If you do make candles, you do have to have a cautionary tale on the bottom um, just so people know the burning instructions and making sure that they don't leave it burning. I, I know it seems counterintuitive to have to tell a grown-up, don't leave a burning fire in your house unattended, but you do need to have that on every candle that you make, even if it's a tea light candle, especially if it's handmade, and they have theirs. Then there is a handmade soap, soap, which is called Honeyed Oats. And what I like about what they've done, it looks like they use pre-printed labels and then they write in the weight and the kind of soap. And so as you can see, it has the crushed oatmeal right inside. Very cool. Then we have this one, which... What is this? What kind of paper is this? It's like craft paper. You've received lots and, and we're still not done. Can can. We're still not done. This one is a cool mint with poppy seeds. So I, I kind of don't want to ruin the wrapping, but I feel like I want to smell it and see it. <gasps> can you keep up, baby boy? How pretty is that? It doesn't really have much of a scent, but it is beautiful to look at. And those poppy seeds in there will definitely exfoliate your skin. So I don't know. I'm going to have to choose which one am I going to use tonight. Maybe I'll have an excuse to take three showers before I go to bed. Who knows? Hey, Sharia, how are you? Now, this one here actually had another one of those um, cigar bands on there. The only thing, they don't have any ingredients on here, but I guess because they were giving it out to soap makers, they felt like they didn't need them. Um, as you can see, it has um, the um, spoon swirl, not the spoon swirl. It's more like a drop swirl, but it also has a mica line in here. So if, well, you can kind of see it better on this side. So it looks like they've used a black or a blue mica and they sprinkled it in between the layers. And then they did a gold marble one as well. Not marble. A gold mica line, which is giving it that marble look hand in hand. That's what's giving it that marble look. And they used 
it looks like one, two, three shades of green in here. Three shades of green and then a cream color. They did a, this is a great execution of that. I love that. Absolutely love that. We got more candles. This is called a volcano candle. This is, so, that is pretty. Look at this candle. It's three different shades. It's a really bright orange and a more amber orange and then a red. And it smells like a volcano. And they have the same thing at the bottom. The warning sign for what you need to do if you're going to burn this candle. The maximum burn time. Um, it says for best results, burn four hours at a time and always from flammable materials and all that other stuff. And then I love the cap on here handmade guys everything that i'm showing you a handmade artisan has made them so kudos guys kudos oh now this one now this screams handmade this to me screams handmade it has the cutest little bag do you make the soap yourself well what i'm showing you here is from a soap makers meetup I do make my own handmade soap, but all of these goodies that I'm showing you came from a soap swap that I attended today. So as a part of the meetup, all the soap makers that attended swapped their soap with another person. So there were a total of 12 of us that participated in there. So I should have 11 items, but I've lost count um, because you don't bring something for yourself. So it gives you ideas on packaging. I think this is adorable. I really love this. Um, and what they have, it looks like they have some inhalers on the top. They have 100% pure essential oil inhalers. There's two of them. One is a calm and well-being. The other one, let me see if I can, oh, it doesn't say. And the other one is a breathe easy. And then their soap is in one of those boxes that I was showing you, but instead of it being a circle, it's a square opening. And then they have it in a little baggie. What's an inhaler? So um, essential oils are really taking off. Let me come on this side. Essential oils are really taking off for their aromatherapy properties. And so with these, what you do, if you're just like having a bad day, you want a little pick me up or something, you can actually smell this and the aromatherapy properties of those essential oils will be released in the inhaler. So it's like a burst of good smelling. Somebody then walked by and maybe they didn't bathe with soap today and kind of put this in front of your nose and get a good sniff instead of the bad sniff. Best way I can describe it. So on their box, the way they did it, let's open this one. They put their handmade soap the name of the soap, which is orange sherbet, the ingredients, do not use if allergic to any of the ingredients listed above. It's three ounces. I need a lavender one. Yes, like calm me down, Lord. Calm me down. Um, they put their company address, their email address, and then it says handmade with love. That's what's on the little sticker up here. And then when you open it, It's a nice round soap. Ooh, it smells nice. So it's a nice little round ball of soap. And it feels nice too. I think it was, it feels like hot process, which is why you're getting this side over here, which would be a nice, I know Periscope will not give me smell of soap. I wish you guys could smell it. Um, I'm trying to come up with a way where I can say, like I can send out like some scent kits to you guys and I can say open box number one. While I'm making something, I'm like, that's what it smells like. But we haven't gotten there yet. All right, there's a little bit more guys. There's another can um, candle. This is the lady who owns a store. She owns a store in New Jersey. This is a premium hand poured vegetable. Didn't know there could be vegan. Now that would be awesome. You guys would, yeah, where I could like send out like Soap Nation kits and it'd be like, don't open this until the broadcast. You late in the game. There's a smell of vision app. Where is it? No, no, no. Catch me up because I'm very late because I've been asking for a smell of scope since I started making soap on Periscope. 
not over here laughing at me. LMAO. No, catch me up. I don't want to be late. If there's something that already exists where I can be like scratch and sniff this, like I'm telling you, if that exists already, me and my daughters are getting ready to pack. I think the are teasing. Oh. Mr. Lurker. Got me stopping midstream and everything. Okay. Oh, this smells incredible. Boulevard St. Germain. Cotton paper wick. Oh, man. This smells so good. If I could dupe... I'm about to tell you guys to smell it. If I could dupe this fragrance, it's not a vanilla. It's a floral with a citrus undertone. It's very sweet, but it has a flower at the top and then a fruit that hits you at the back of it when you smell it. So this is another really pretty candle. So I got two can three candles right here. I got a volcano candle. I got a, oh God, what is it? I need to know what that smell is. Um, that one. And then this one here was called sunflower. So I got three candles all from three different makers in three completely different ways. And this is the beauty of handmade, guys. No two are ever going to be the same. And you get to try different things. Um, let's see. One more bar. Ooh, look at these swirls. I just found my favorite one. Save the best for last. Soaps and bath. Dapper delight. Soap for the confidence. First of all, first of all, check these swirls out. Boom. Do you guys see that? Do you guys see those? And then look at their label. It just wraps all the way around. They have their ingredients here. They have the infamous line. This is soap. Don't eat it. Thanks. They have their website. I love this. I love everything about this. This has one of my favorites. That is my favorite for the day. And then I got some witch hazel. These are witch hazel, but that wasn't in the thingamajigger. And that was an apricot. So that's that. So then I whipped out my credit card because... Well, there's actually two things I whipped my credit card out for. Two people got my credit card today. And one item had to be shipped. Oh, where's my food? I'm getting thirsty. Water would probably be better, but we're going to go for the brown water instead of the regular water. I don't see my book. So I actually got two books today. One is going to help me with projects for after school kids. The other one is going to help me for moving into the facial serums and two other items. I'll say that. And so we watched. So you guys see all of this that I have showed you. I may have spent $7.00. Well, no, this was 15 $22 for everything. Everything right here. $22. Can't bait it. Can't bait it. So I'm going to put this in here. Because now I'm going to show you what I actually spent money on. And that is so I could start the facial care. Great and crazy. Incredible deal. I could not have asked for anything more. So we've gotten the soap down to a science. I love your charcoal soap. It made my soft, my soft, soft skin. My skin, I'm so glad to hear that. Who is that? Toyon? I hope I say your name right. Thank you for placing your order and trusting me with your order and trying the soap. Um, if there's anything we can do to improve in the future, you're going to be getting an email asking you for a referral or just a review an honest review is all that we ask so if you loved it 
let us know. If you hate it, just destroy the email. Act like you never saw it. I'm just kidding. So that's what we got in that particular bag. I'm going to pile all that. Well, that was between two bags. That was between two. I got to get out. I got to get it out the way. You for sight. How are you? I don't know if you got a chance to see my Insta story today, but I was at a um, soap makers gathering. So if any of you are just coming in, you for sight, I know you just came in. So I'm going to give you a recap. Um, I was at a soap makers gathering today. And what we are doing is unloading all of my goodies that I got while I was there. So when you go, you always get like a freebie bag that comes from the vendors, the soap people and all of that because they want to get your business. I got a bag full of swag. I got one, two, three bags of swag and two books. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm going through the free stuff to the D stash stuff, which is what we just opened, the soap swap stuff. And now the stuff that I brought, because I'm expanding um, every time that I go to these, I look at the program and see, is there something new that I can learn? Not just for the sake of learning it, but applying it as I learn it. And one of those things, um, I do soap. What you guys know through and through, I make a bar soap like no other for um dry skin, sensitive skin, oily skin, problematic skin, whatever kind of skin you have, I've got a bar for you. I was wondering if you ever thought about changing the samples in the sampler. What can I incorporate into my business exactly? Somebody asked me that. Soap sampler is actually sold out. I only have three sample bars left. So I think what we're going to do going forward is the month before, like right now, I'll be making the sample sets for next month. And as they're going out, I'll be making the bars so people get a chance to test those samples out. So starting in April, it's going to be a rotating, whatchamacallit. Somebody's trying to join. Let's see who you are. But you came in when we got that influx of numbers. So are you? A, oh, you canceled. Okay, good. All right. Um, so, yes, it will be a rotating sample soap set each month for sure, a rotating cycle. So it'll be four bars that you can try out. And then throughout that month, I'll be making those bars and you'll get first, if you order a sample set, you'll get first dibs on them when they cure at the next month. So it's kind of like you are getting a sneak peek at what's going to be available in a larger size. And hopefully you can give me feedback so I know, yes, honey, make about 10 loaves of that or and you might want to skip that one. But yes, that is definitely coming, coming, coming. So the class that I found extremely valuable, will you send us an email? There should be a newsletter coming out to all of you on Monday. If you are on my Natural Soap by Zakia email list, not the Live Soap School one, Natural Soap by Zakia, meaning you if you purchase something from me, you're on the list. Or if you've gone there and entered your email address, you are on the list. But you will be getting a list of all of the products that are now available. You also get like a small discount for ordering off the newsletter. And then what's coming for the month of April. So you can kind of plan ahead and know what's happening. So the... Session that I went to today, or that everybody attended, but really caught my attention was how to make your own facial serums. And if you know what a serum is, when you look at the, the, the layers of your skin, you have the epidermis layer, which is the outer layer. Typically, any kind of product like my body butters, um, my body frosting, they're typically going to stop at that top layer because they're so thick and they have a very difficult time penetrating the skin. Is that anything like a mask that's coming, you for sight? My mask will be coming when I get the one thing that I don't have here because I ordered it. It had to be delivered. It's kind of large, but I needed it in order to do the facial mask. 
So when you do something with a butter, it's very, very difficult for it to penetrate your skin. The next thing that you can use is a lotion, but that only goes to a certain right below the skin layer. Serums, on the other hand, have the ability to penetrate because most of the time they are water-based and they're made with botanicals and other additives that are able to penetrate the skin and put those additional components in. So I have the products in terms of cleansing your skin, triple butter blend, crushed oats and honey, activated charcoal, activated charcoal and tea tree. All four of those, not eight, but four, all four of those bars do a fantastic job of getting you a clean surface. The next thing you need to do is tone your face. The next thing you need to do is moisturize and possibly do a deeper penetration with the serum. So, in my bag, I have got 100% pure aloe vera. You guys don't know about hyaluronic acid? Get to know it because this is a very expensive ingredient, but we need it. So that's what's there. Then we have got botanical extracts. We have several. They had a sale where you can get seven of them for $40. $40? I paid $40 for them. Um, but I wanted every single one of them. I got a chamomile, a sea buckthorn, um, an oat, and they're all water soluble, which means they will be great inside of the serum. Um, cucumber, green tea, bamboo, I got a preservative, a natural preservative. I felt like Paige just now saying that. But this is a natural with absolutely none of the ones that we don't want on our skin. This is a 100% natural one that also offers your skin a little bit of a slip and a grip or whatever. Um, um, calendula. So these are all the extracts. So extracts are different from hydrosols and are different from essential oils. And we'll talk about that later, but not right now. So we got those right here. Then what we got are hydrosols. Very soon I'll be making my own hydrosols. That's what's coming in the mail. That's what's coming in the mail. These broadcasts are going to change so much. My house is going to what bar is good for slightly dry? Triple butter blend is the best soap for slightly dry skin. If you have oily skin, um, I would say get the activated charcoal and kaolin clay if you want unscented and activated charcoal and tea tree if you want like a deeper cleanse. You're welcome. But triple butter blend is the one you're looking for, for sure. Um, I got a chamomile one and I got rose, hydrosols. So hydrosols are the milk of the plant. You use a distilled machine or a still. This is awesome. Listen, Linda, listen. Baby steps, guys. You just got to do baby steps. I didn't have all this stuff when I first got started. But every time I go to one of these events, I say, I can go in that direction and I can do that particular thing. And then in a couple of months, I'm going to go to an, I'm going to the national conference in Dallas where I'm probably going to see something else. But if it's not in the realm of facial care, because that's where I'm going, I'm going facial care to round out these. Well, I only have two sitting right here to round these out. You're always led in a different direction, depending on what event you go to. No, no, no. Nope, not true. You can be. It's very dangerous to go to events without a plan. I always go with the game plan. I look at the agenda. I see who's going to be speaking. I'm actually speaking at this particular event, but I see who's going to be speaking and I think, hmm, how is this going to help me further what it is that I'm doing right now? And then for those things that I can kind of sort of see in the future, if they don't clash with what I already have on the list, then I'll make time for those. But I always start with where I am and then maybe two of those sessions I'll dedicate to, 
I need to learn this for later and put it like in the back pocket. So we have the two hydrosols. Then we also have, oh, I got two of the preservatives because they were half price today. I got a book on the heart of aromatherapy. So it's the opposite. You go with laser focus and an agenda and that fits that agenda. It's what you go to. Yes. If it fits that agenda, if it fits, we go. If we, if it doesn't fit, I don't do it. But I got these airless pumps right here for the serums. Now you don't need a lot of a serum. You need like a pea size amount and that'll probably cover your entire face. And the beauty of this is it's airless. So no additional air is going to get in there. You don't have to worry about any kind of microbial, bacterial, or anything growing in there. You don't have to worry about trying to stick your finger in, knowing if it's clean or not. Hopefully it is. But if it's not, you're never touching the product because you're using this airless pump. Never touching it. So I got about 20 of these. And then... I have about 20 scales here, but I needed a smaller scale. This scale can measure to a tenth of a gram. We will be able to purchase everything that will be in the store on. Yes, everything that's in the store will be sold online first. The store, I don't want, when I say this, I want to stop saying it's a brick and mortar. Um, I'm not going to the store to sell what I have already online. In my mind, that would be going backwards because I'm already selling that stuff online. The physical space is for the people who are in live soap school, for their products to be there. A few of the items that I make will be in there, but it's primarily an experience in a production studio inside of that brick and mortar. That's the whole idea of that store. Something that's never been done before, at least in my mind. It maybe has, maybe hasn't. All right, but this here is a tiny scale that allows you to measure in a tenth of a gram. A scientist has to have a lab. You have got it. Now, I don't know if this actually has batteries in it. No, I got to get batteries. But it because you're using such small percentages of these extracts, the botanicals, the hydrosols, um, the hyaluronic acid, um, the aloe vera, the glycerin, whatever the ingredients are, they're in such small percentages. You want to be precise because these ingredients are expensive and you don't want to overdo it and you don't want to underdo it. So I had to get a scale that was small enough that I would be able to get that level of precision so that I could be confident in the products that I was making that I was formulating them correctly. So I understand the science of formulating them and now I have the tools to be able to do it accurately. So this was what I whipped my credit card out for. And then the last thing was a book on caveman chemistry, which allows you to actually, um, actually learn how cavemen kind of evolved and how chemistry had a part to do with that and I'm leveraging that book for the after school program. I'm going to take them through caveman chemistry. How to, <laughs> we're probably going to skip how to start a fire. I'm just saying. Uh, but there's other things in there leading up to soap making. So I think it'll create a more holistic program that I do with youth. Um, and then I also have the machine coming that I will be able to distill my own plant matter to create my own artisanal, is it artisanal, <laughs> artisanal, um, hydrosols. Wait a second. Did you say caveman like Neanderthal, like Neanderthal? Well, caveman chemistry. And it takes you through like how chem the new age version of how chemistry evolved. I'm not saying that that's how it actually evolved, but it gives you ideas for, um, science experiments with kids. So I think that's really, really helpful. The author was actually there who signed my book, um, but I don't have it. But I have a ton of my airless pumps in here, right here. So my Soap of the Mom subscribers, they're actually going to be the first ones to get the serums because 
they're the ones that kind of test products out and let me know how things go. Um, and then I'll make it available on the website. Right now, I do have everything that I need in order to make these serums. I will not be making those live here on Periscope um, for now. At some point, I'll make them live. I'll see how people react to them, and then, then we'll go back live. So, what does this all mean? I guess that's, we probably should round this thing out. You gotta constantly learn something new. You will get bored, you will get tired, you will probably get left behind in your, in your own industry if you don't step outside of whatever your comfort zone is. And for me, that's surrounding myself with other people. Sounds like you kind of back to square one, but in another field. Well, kind of. Yeah, there's definitely a square one field. To, yes, I would say that's a very good, a very good assumption. But for me, that keeps it all fresh. That keeps it all fresh where, oh, or it keeps it interesting, I should say. It keeps it where I'm not going to get bored doing the same things. Hey, Dr. Tachi, this was a long broadcast. We were talking about um, my experience going to a soap makers gathering today. I'll do one more reset for the group. Hey, hey, hey. Um, I am a member of the Handcrafted Soap Makers Guild. It's called the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. I'm also a member of three regional soap makers gatherings because I think you always should be sharpening the saw. And the way I sharpen the saw is surrounding myself with people who have done it much longer than me those that are just starting and those that are kind of sort of right there where I am. And today we had um, facial care was a part of it. Preservatives was another part of it. Soap making science was a huge part of it. Um, and testing the purity of our lie. One thing that's very rampant, especially it's probably rampant in every industry, but with soap makers, um, there's a lot of keyboard warriors on Facebook groups, on forums, YouTube videos where that sound, it's incredible. And it's kind of like you whisper down the lane. And when one person hears it, another person may not do any research on it, but they'll repeat it. And then the next person repeats it and the next person, and the next person, and the next person. And it just keeps going until it becomes fact. And nine times out of 10, it's never fact. It's one person had one experience and then because they were the squeakiest wheel at that moment, it becomes kind of the, so the rumors take the more precedence than the, they take much more precedence than the facts, more often than they should. And so um, today, one of those rumors were debunked in terms of super fatting your soap and doing lie discounts and when it actually makes an impact by a chemist who actually did the experiment and was able to show on graphs how it impacted the final product. Um, and so those kind of events help you to stay grounded in what you know is scientifically fact, because honestly, soap making is a bit artistry and there's a lot of chemistry. And that gray space in between is left to you as the soap maker to do your own interpretation and kind of let it fall the way it may do. The one thing that will never change is you need sodium hydroxide and oils to make your products. I'm a new customer. Mango Tango smells good. Any body frostings to match? Oh my God, that Mango Tango. I'm going to have a whole Mango Tango line at this point. I just made a Mango Tango bar to match the Mango Tango whip soap. And now you come in asking about the body frosting. So I will do mango tango body frosting as well. I'm just going to have all mango tango. I'm going to shut everything else out of the store. It's all going to be mango tango. I don't work to sounds like there's a lot of wiggle room, but the base chemicals are the same. Oh, I'm so serious. I was at a event at a hospital and I didn't get a chance to sit down the entire time because they were coming for that. And the whole time I was there, they would say, oh, well, does this whip soap come in a bar soap? So I came home that same day. And what did I make? 
the Mango Tango bar. And two days later, nobody's asked about the bar, but what you did ask me about is the body frosting. People are... I appreciate you asking about the body frosting. I'm the, hey, DJ Butter, how are you? I will include Mango Tango in the body frosting. So if you're just joining, I'm kind of giving a recap of the broadcast. You can definitely watch the replay and kind of my lessons learned for the day. So getting there early kind of ensures that you are going to get all of your goodies. These were all of my grab bags. So this was something that they gave you just for walking in where you can kind of um, get a feel for the new vendors that are in the space. Who is offering products for soap makers? And the way they get their material out there is by sponsoring these events and sponsoring these gatherings. So you walk in, you sign in, let them know that you're there, and they hand you a bag full of goodies. So we unbox this if you want to see what was in here. Watch the beginning of the video. After that, there is something called a de-stash table where soap makers who kind of go overboard when they buy stuff, um, they buy way too much stuff. And what ends up happening is it just collects dust at their house. So a de-stash is a way for you to get additional items at steep discounts. Most of the stuff that was in this bag that I brought today was a dollar. A dollar, nothing was more than five dollars with the exception of the rosemary essential oil, which I spent fifteen dollars for. Then there was also a soap swap where you get to swap your soap as a soap maker with another soap from another soap maker. So there were 12 of us that participated in that. So that means I got 11 items from 11 soap makers, including a sharing of ideas and a trade off of things you may have had too much of, but someone else needs. Exactly. And here's a prime example of that. I'll be doing the gender reveal bath bombs. So these will allow me to have embeds inside the bath bombs that are various colors. So I can do blue, I can do pink, I can do green, I can do like a rainbow effect. So when the bath bomb drops in the water, all of those colors can shoot out. And I paid a dollar for this. So this will allow me to make that. And if I were to try to buy this in the store, it would be between $15 and $25. Um... So that's another thing that I got. The one thing that I was telling people, if you're enrolled, especially in live soap school, and you are finding a gathering and you sell your handmade products, um, the one thing I would say is don't buy oils, butters, fragrance oils, because you don't know how long that soap maker had it and if it has expired or not. The only exception to that is if the manufacturers there and they have a very heavy discount on it because they can attest to the shelf life on this is two years well is it two years from the time that you brought it or two years from the time that you the manufacturer are saying that you have sold it to me and you cannot authenticate the pureness of it or what the performance will be in your products so that's the only thing if you're doing it as a hobby and, so, and I'm telling you, people had jugs and jugs of fragrance oils and essential oils. If you're just doing it for you and you want to test out different scents, that is a great place to go and stock up. But if you're selling it to other people, you have to know from the manufacturer to your workshop, out the door to someone else, where the, the life cycle of that. Like, you know, I always think about law and order when they talk about the evidence. Has the evidence been tampered? Has your product been tampered with? And if you can't authenticate from the time it came from that manufacturer to when you put it in your product to you shipping it out, you can't stand behind when it's going to expire. So that's the only thing about meetups and you're in business. Don't buy those ingredients for products that you're going to be selling. The chain of command. I could not get that word out or those words out just in case the unthinkable happens. And that leads me to the other thing. Don't be in business selling bath and body products in our litigious society and you do not have insurance. At least have product liability insurance. You never know. You absolutely positively never know 
when someone's going to say, oh, I'm going to come up and try to sue. And if you don't have insurance, they're coming after your house. So make sure that you are covered. Who is a good manufacturer for essential oils? I have a write-up on my blog for live soaps, on livesoapschool.com. If you click in my bio, I actually list the manufacturers that I get my products from. Um, they don't pay me for any sponsorships, so I don't list them on the live streams anymore. But they're on my website. I'm just saying they won't they won't tell you about natural soap by Zapia and live soap school. So I don't tell you about I'm telling you about them on my blog. Hopefully that helps. And then finally, um, I like to put into practice those things that I have learned at the event. So I got the items that I need in order to make my own facial serums. And I tried the facial serum. She gave us a lecture on the different types of items that you can use on your face between a butter, a lotion, and a serum. And the serum is the one that can penetrate the deepest layer of our skin and deliver those things as you have maturing and aging skin that lotion just simply can't do and butters absolutely can't do. So when you think about it, a butter is only able to offer a barrier of, protect, uh, of protection because it's not able to penetrate beyond that first layer of the epidermis. The lotion, because it's a thinner consistency, can penetrate a little bit further, but the serums, because it's so thin, have the ability to penetrate the deepest. And so um, we made our own hydrosols today I tested one out right here on my hand. It's the smoothest thing that I have ever felt. So I will be making those. If you are a member of my Soap of the Month Club, that is what you will be getting for the March 15th shipment. If you've already gotten your shipment because you're between the 1st and the 15th, you'll be getting it in April. 908 Blue, how are you? You got to tell me something. Why do you want to join the broadcast? Say hi. Say hello. All right. Ooh, face by Zakia. Face. Face. I don't know what I'm going to call it. Natural soap by Zakia just won't work. Because <laughs> it's not soap. But we already had. And the reason why I got so interested in this particular item. When I was at my, um, the event at the hospital. People got like the three pack of the soap. So they would get the triple butter blend the crushed oats and honey, and one of my activated and tea tree. And then they would say, well, what can I use to moisturize my skin? I didn't necessarily have a product for them. Um, I could have gave them a body frosting, but all of my body frosting has essential oils in them. And you know how I feel about anything with essential oils even getting anywhere near your eyes? No, no. So I didn't have anything. So going to this event and understanding why we need to uh, put a preservative in there, how I could get something that was paraben-free as a pre preservative, because all of the preservatives that I have known about have had some kind of paraben in them, um, which is going to clog your pores anyway. So it's kind of defeating the purpose in my mind. Um, so I was able to find a natural alternative for a preservative, I also have a still machine. It's a copper still. It's a beautiful machine where I'm going to be able to make my own hydrosols. Yes, definitely. It has to be paraben free. It 100% must be paraben free. Um, I'll be able to make my own hydrosols, which is the, I want to say the essence, but it's the liquid portion, the non-oil portion of plants. So the hydrosols that I was able to get, and it comes out in a liquid, and you guys will see me make them live once my still gets here, but it's a beautiful copper material. You put your plant material in there. You put it on a heat source. I can't wait for your book on lotions, creams, and serums. Look at you speak it into existence. We'll see, because this is a whole nother realm for me for sure. But I'm going to approach it the same way I did the soap. Um, I won't sell it until it is tested and loved and approved. And I understand exactly what's happening in there. Um, but this one here is a chamomile hydrosol. So basically what they did was they took chamomile flowers, they put them into the still, then they had the water steam go through there 
And then whatever comes out of that steam distillation is the hydrosol of that plant. I do have a whole book over there on hydrosol. So that will be um, what I'm studying. There's nothing really in the soap realm that is new to me at this point. But the hydrosols, the aromatherapy, all of that I think will be an interesting next chapter and a very good next step for what I would like to do with natural soap by Zakia. Um, so that's all guys. Hopefully you now, hmm, that's how they make the unmentionable. With parabens and unmentionable ingredients, LOL. Um, th th I hope you have, you are a wealth of knowledge. I so, and I, I'm so happy to have you. I am happy to have you here for sure. Um, what I'm hoping that I'm able to get across, no matter what your industry is, there has to be people around you that can help to feed your curiosity. And if you ever get to the point that you feel that you have, you know it all, there's nothing more to learn, look further because there's probably something that you have not tapped. Um, and if you surround yourself with other people, there are probably industry organizations that you can become a part of. Um, people that have been in it longer, they can probably point you in directions that you may have not even considered. Before today, I think I was thinking about making a lotion. And when she broke down the different layers of the skin and the function of those various products that we make as handcrafted artisans, it made more sense for me to go with the serum. Um, hey, John, how are you? It made more sense for me to start with the serum. Um, lotion is nothing more than oil and water. And you actually have an emulsifier that pulls the two together. With the serums, you have botanicals, um, you have extracts, you have hydrosols, you have glycerin. There's a little bit more artistry in it than, let me get this to a certain temperature, get this to a certain temperature, blend them together. Voila, you've got lotion. No, there's actually a little bit of a balance um, to it all. So, that's what I got. Any questions? I'm going to drink some more of this brown water because I'm thirsty. If I get a little closer to the camera, you'll be like, girl, put some chapstick on. You got nothing? I got nothing either. Enjoy your Saturday night. You mean a thinner brush, a beautiful canvas. It creates a beautiful, beautiful canvas. I went you ever consider white labeling? I do. I white label for one company. If you guys don't know, um, with, with any handcrafted, I'm going to stick with soap making because that's what I know. There is the option to do, hey, I want your natural soap by Zakia and I want to sell it in my store. It comes exactly the way I label it. And depending on how much of a quantity you get, it's, it can go at a wholesale pricing. Typically, my whipped... Um, soaps you have to buy them by the case three cases minimum in order for you to get wholesale pricing and there's also a dollar threshold then there is private label and private label is you like this product but you actually and it's also called white label but you have Jacinia's beauty care and you want to put your own label on that product it's typically a little bit more expensive than wholesale because you're no longer marketing for natural soap by Zakia in your place of business. You're marketing Jacinia's beauty care, but I don't have to sell that product. I sell it in bulk to a particular company and then it's on their shelves and they do it. Um, the collab, I don't know what that says, collab. I'm not even going to, you're going to have to phonetically spell whatever that is because I don't know what that says. Hopefully, it's not me. <laughs> you mean a mutual trade-off. Yes. So when it's wholesale, because you're buying so much, you get a price discount. When it's private label, you are putting your label on that product and allowing somebody else to manufacture it for you because you're just not into making soap. 
but you want to offer that product because it's complementary to something else. Like maybe that person makes candles and lotions and body oils. Now they also want to carry a complementary soap to go with it. That can be customized. It's just that it will come to you as bars that are shrink wrapped and you are putting your label or however you want to package it onto it. So it's a little bit of a balance um, for, but yes, I do wholesale and private label. I do birthday parties, bridal showers, baby showers, office parties, whatever. Um, it just depends on what it is that you are looking for. Any other questions? I'm so ready to go to sleep. It was a long day. It was, I really enjoyed this meetup today and I am teaching. And if any of you are in the Virginia area, I will be teaching a soap making class there. April the 26th, just one. Are you still excited and fired up and ready to go? I'm fired up, fired up. I'm fired up. Are you talking about the brick and mortar? I am extremely excited about that. I actually went around to the current owner of that store because she is really struggling with moving her products. And I actually set her, <laughs> I actually got her set up online to help her move her products much faster. She called me last night and she said, we sold $100 worth of stuff. I said, I told you about online. You are doing a brick and mortar. I am. It's not a typical retail store. So um, it's very interesting how that worked out. But basically somebody in my community has watched me on live streaming for about a year and a half. And she actually owns a brick and mortar that I'll be going into, but it's a bookstore. She did not embrace social media. She did not embrace an online marketplace. So she's ready to go on to chapter two of her life. And I'll be taking over that space. And only the front of the space will be a retail store. My space is going to really be a place for experience where people can come in, take classes, get consulting. And then the back will still be a production studio where I'll still be able to live stream. Um, my Super Soap Sundays will be live Super Soap Sundays where we have all of you that are able to join and we'll have a live studio audience where they'll actually be able to buy the things that I'm making and then that kind of stuff. So yeah, looking it's looking like May. I think May is the most realistic time frame. Um, but between now and then, I will be teaching in Virginia. So if any of you are watching from Virginia, thank you um, head over to my Live Soap School Facebook page. And that has all the information on how you can register, um, what the topics will be. It's actually called A Brunch of Possibilities. And it's um, highlighting um, me and two other moms who are really just kind of working it out. Like, how do you have a full-time job and you also have a full-time business? Isn't your conference in May? Yes, but it doesn't mean May 1st. And when we open the brick and mortar, I gotta stop saying store. When we open the brick and mortar, we will only be opening initially Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three days a week. Three days a week is how much we will be open for the way it's scheduled and the traffic on that particular street that's what makes the most sense i'll be in there but we'll only be open for business three days a week so april i'll be in virginia um may i will be in dallas speaking at the national soap makers conference july i will be attending the or i'm sorry june i'll be attending the pittsburgh soap makers gathering in july i'll be attending the new york soap makers gathering so april may june and july are all about handcrafted goodies but good stuff all good stuff happening so if you're looking for a class and you want to join me live like physically and take a class april will be the first time you'll be able to do that and once i am in this space we'll be offering classes thursday friday and saturday if you're in the philadelphia area if you are nowhere near virginia or Philadelphia, 
We do have the online soap school, which is live soap school. You can take your classes at your own pace. I'm Zakia. Hopefully, as you have joined on these broadcasts, you have come to realize why we say it is so much more than soap. These are my goodies from one day surrounded by people who can talk soap all day. Good evening. Wow, that's a lot. When do you get to close the other eye? You may not know it, but it's closed right now. I'm definitely not firing on all cylinders. Definitely not. Oh, here's the book. I always get a book when I go to these. I actually got two. I got Caveman Chemistry, and I also got this book, which is called The Heart of Aromatherapy. This one here. So this, you know, this has over 100 recipes. I'm not sure how I would use them, but it'll give me a little bit more insight as I'm telling you. You know how sometimes I will, I'm going off on a tangent, but sometimes I'll tell you, Yes, I made a eucalyptus soap, but it's not great for kids under six because it will cause issues with their respiratory system. That comes from the aromatherapy information. I just remembered the other books. Oh, my soap making books. They're right up there. You for sight be trying to get me to stay on here like market girl, market. Is there a number I can call you directly? What do you need to call me directly for? There you go. There you go. There you go. Go, go. All right, you for sight. Only because you're doing it. Oh, wait, where's another one? Okay. There's one. There's two. There's three. H. If you need to call me, there is an option in my bio that says contact Zakia. And when you contact Zakia, that will take you to my Facebook page, which will take you to my chat bot. Won't take my Apple Pay. Okay, you're trying to pay. Go to Natural Soap by Zakia and click on Message Me. That will take you to my chat bot, which will say, do you want to call her? And you can say yes, and then it will call my cell phone. Don't do it now, because we're live. As soon as we get off of here. Okay. All right. Author of three soap making books. The very first one is the new soap makers cookbook, Ingredients for Success. If you are just now starting out on your soap making journey and trying to figure out hobby or business, how can I be successful? This book was written as a result of numerous broadcasts where people would come in and ask the same questions over and over again, as well as my students that were in live soap school. They learned how to make soap, but they weren't really comfortable with selling that soap. This book answers those questions. That's why it's called Ingredients for Success. That book was followed up by the new soap makers cookbook, Making Cold Processed Soap from Scratch. Now, this book goes into grave detail without all the fluff on how to make your own soap from scratch at home. It tells you the supplies you need, the ingredients you need, the steps to take, and recipes and things to look out for without all of the excess nonsense. I have shown you guys my library of 50 books on soap making. That's how I can confidently say it's without the fluff. If you want to make soap, this is the book that you should get. The third book and the final book in this installment as of now, hint, hint, there will be more, is the new vegan soap cookbook, how to make plant-based soap from scratch. This book is packed with recipes. And you know how I tell you guys, I'm looking for your feedback. Well, this was a result of someone who got this book saying that there wasn't enough recipes. So I said, okay, here's a book full of recipes. This one doesn't have enough. Here's some more. This one doesn't have enough. Here's some more. And this one is getting rave reviews as well as this one. All of my books, the New Soap Makers Cookbook, Ingredients for Success. The New Soap Makers Cookbook, Making Cold Processed Soap from Scratch. And the New Vegan Soap Cookbook, Making Plant-Based Soap from Scratch, are all available on Amazon. You have got to see this on playback. <laughs> Darn it. All available on Amazon in paperback, because I do have places in there for you to take notes. 
I got fancier and fancier as I wrote these books because I got better experience and people said it would have been helpful if. So the second book actually has links that will take you to videos, resources, downloads. And the third book actually has QR codes where if you take a picture with your phone, it will take you to videos that demonstrate those things that I'm talking about in the book. Stick around for book number four. It's going to blow your mind. All the books are great. I use this faithfully. Thank you, Ms. Francis. So all of them are available on Amazon. You can get a printed book. So if you're somebody like me that likes to take notes, get the printed book. If you, I try to join the soap of the month, it won't let you. <gasps> True woman of God. We're about to do some live troubleshooting. I'm going to have to go to this computer. I'm going to have to go to the computer. Um, we, that may mean, sorry, the page you were looking for is not available or exist. That means that we have gotten to 30 soap of the month subscribers. It's automatically shut off at 30 because that's all I can manage. So if that's the case, I, I have to check. Let me check. That's actually great news for me, but bad news if it's not really doing what it's supposed to be doing. So I have to check on that. Um, in ebook format, if you would like to get it immediately downloaded on your device, you can get it in ebook. All three are available in ebook. You can get my books by going to bit.ly forward slash soap books with an S on the end. That's all I got. I'm tired. And now I got to go check on this Soap of the Month Club. Because if we got to 30, dear God, I don't think I was prepared for that anyway. But have a fantastic Saturday. All of you that have ordered your tracking numbers should have already gone out. Um, they're at the post office. Excellent. Absolutely excellent. Thank you, you for sight. You always remind me that I'm also a business. I need to tell people about it. So thank you for um, prompting me. There are some books over there, by the way. You're welcome. Um, and if you just joined and you missed what I said, watch the replay. There's a lot of good stuff and some questionable stuff, but hopefully enjoyable. You are welcome, guys. I'm Zakia Ringgold. If that circle is still saying a plus sign, tap it to make it a check mark so you'll be following me. Have a fantastic night. Good boy. <laughs> boy, boy now. See you later.